wonderful song. <laughs> now I know what kind of songs Nathan likes. I like the ending. Everybody shout. Let's do that together. Ready? Everybody shout on three. You have to unmute yourselves. One, two, three. Everybody shout. <laughs> <laughs> Only he can shout it and me. <laughs> what about me? I guess it's the... Shout too? Okay. Let's try one more time. Everybody has to shout. One, two, three. <laughs> Nisha, you're laughing. <laughs> yeah, I almost laugh. Out. <laughs> can't stop the laugh anyway. Can't stop the laugh anyway. It was a funny song. Did you dance? No. no I tried to dance a little. It's like kind of a funny African dances. They were doing that while they were singing. I try. I'm. I'm. I really uh, not good at dancing, so it was a little bit weird. Anyway, today we're talking about yes, your favorite topic when David makes a mistake, right? Is that your favorite? Topic? <laughs> yeah, seeing David's make mistakes. What makes children happy? Let's see. Anyway, I, I have a lot of reading to do, so let let me start right away. In the spring, David should have been leading his army but he stayed behind see that's that's where he kind of slipped in the very beginning he should have been fighting with his men but he decided to relax and stay home and you know watch tv play video games instead of being with his men from his palace terrace he saw a beautiful woman bathing Ooh la la and he says bring this woman to me but but king she's the wife of uriah and the daughter uh, of one of your mighty men he doesn't listen to anyone. The king sent for me. Yes, come, be with me, says David. Hmm. Several weeks later, she got pregnant. I'm pregnant. David needed a plan to prevent public shame for him and possible stoning for Bathsheba. Go to General Joab and send me one of my soldiers, Uriah the Hittite. Uriah is Bathsheba's husband. Oops. Here we go. David asked for a report on the men and the war. Then he said, he said to Uriah, you have traveled a great distance. Go home and be with your wife. But instead, Uriah slept at the entrance to the king's palace. He didn't go home to sleep. He just stayed over there at the entrance. Why did you not go home last night? David asks him. I could not do such a thing while the king's men sleep in open fields. I cannot go and stay in comfort at home. David hoped to get Uriah drunk so he would go home and, and others would think that Sheba was pregnant by her husband. But the king's plan to cover up his sin failed as Uriah again slept outside the palace. Give this note to Joab without delay. So David is trying to kind of cover up his mistakes so nobody would ever find out what he did. And this is the letter that he wrote to his army's commander. He said, put my soldier Uriah on the front line where the battle will be the fiercest, then withdraw from him so he will, he, he will be struck down and die. So now he's planning, David is planning to kill Uriah. That's the only way for him to cover up his mistakes. Pull back the reinforcements, the commander commands. And suddenly what happens, there's poor Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, dies. Return to the capital and give this message to the king. His anger may arise, but also tell him that Uriah the Hittite is dead. So the commander sends a, uh, a messenger to the king. The king says, why did you get so close to the wall? Didn't you know they would shoot arrows from the wall? They overpowered us, but we drove them back to the wall. The archers shot arrows, and one of those killed was your servant, Uriah. So finally, the messenger says that, yes, it was a mistake, but Uriah got killed. And now David says, tell Joab not to be upset that the sword devours one and then another. Push on with the attack and destroy the city, says David. So he says, it's okay. He's kind of thankful that they got um, rid of Uriah. He pretty much killed him by sending that command. After receiving the news of her husband's death, Bathsheba mourned for seven days. 
Bathsheba, after that, became David's wife. He brought her into the palace where she had their son. But this thing David had done displeased the Lord because he pretty much killed a man to take his wife. The Lord dispatched his prophet Nathan to the king to give him an illustration the shepherd king could understand. My king, says Nathan the prophet, I have a situation I must inform you of. In a certain town, there was a wealthy man that had many sheep. In the same town was a poor man that had only one ewe lamb. Ewe is a female lamb that he kept in the house with his family like that. A traveler visited the rich man, but he did not take one of his own animals to prepare a meal. Instead, he took the one little ewe lamb from the poor man. Oh, no, says David. As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this act deserves to die. Because he did such a thing and had no pity, he must repay the lamb four times over. You are the man, says Nathan. Right? And the lamb is Bathsheba, right? Or, this is what the Lord says, the God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and put his wives in your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if this had not been enough, I would have given you more. Why did you despise the words of the Lord by doing what is evil in his sight? Why did you take Bathsheba from Uriah? Why did you kill Uriah? And then David realizes that he made a mistake. And he says, I have sinned. The Lord has taken away your sin. You're not going to die, said Nathan to him. But that's, it's okay. We're not, we don't, don't have to read the whole story. Let's look at the lesson because we're kind of running out of time. The story was long. Who would like to read? Uh, Guyana. Okay. Read the first part. The stain. This part. All for you. Right. The stain. One evening, while David was walking on the flat roof of his palace, he saw a beautiful woman having a bath. He told his servants to find out who she was and bring her to the palace. When David found out that she was married and that her husband was in his army fighting the Ammonites, he sent a message to the commander telling him to move Uriah to the front ranks where the fighting was fiercest. Fiercest. David wanted... Fiercest. Continue. David wanted Uriah to get killed so he could marry his wife Bathsheba. Uriah did get killed and David married Bathsheba. What did he had done was wrong in the Lord's eyes. So the Lord sent the prophet Nathan to show David how that he had taken something very precious from someone else. Then David confessed his sin and said, I have sinned against the Lord. Thank you. Will the Lord ever forgive me for something really bad? We all make mistakes, maybe not as big as David's mistake. He pretty much killed the person, right? I'm, I don't think that any of you would ever become killers, but we all make mistakes all the time. And let's see. Uh, let's, let's read about forgiveness. Nathan, will you read this part for us? Okay. Will the Lord ever forgive me for something really bad? Do you have all clothes that are stained? Maybe there is a blob of ink or paint that just won't go away completely, no matter how many times it's been through the wash. What David did was really bad. He wanted something, someone that didn't belong to him. He had Uriah killed and brought this harm to the Lord. Do you think that David deserved to be forgiven after all? that the Lord had done for him? No, David did not deserve forgiveness and neither do we. Not one of us has an excuse for the wrong things we do. But God is gracious. That means he will forgive us for every sin, no matter how big it is. However, to, uh, however, to be able to forgive us, someone had to take the blame and the punishment for that sin. That person is Jesus. He loves us so much that he closed to be nailed, he True. chose to be nailed True. on a cross so that his blood can wash away our sins and make our hearts white as snow. 
Thank you, Nathan. And let's read the verse for today together. Ready, go. Wash away, Wash away all, all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. From my sin. Salem 51, 51 verse yes. 2. This word is iniquity. Iniquity. Wash away all my iniquity means my sin, my mistakes, and cleanse me from my sin. Just like David, David did not deserve forgiveness, and yet God forgave him. We do not deserve forgiveness for our mistakes, but God forgives us. How does he do that? Well, he takes the sin, our sin. He took all of our sin. He put it on top of Jesus, and Jesus had to pay the debt. He had to suffer for our sin. And because he paid for our sin, we aren't free, free of sin. Aren't, uh, I guess we, all we can do now is thank Jesus for, for doing that. He saved us. If not for Jesus, we would still be unforgiven, but we are forgiven and free. And we can celebrate that. Woohoo! Like that. <laughs> Who would like to pray for us today? Whose hands are up? Tehila? Nishia? Nishia? Sarah? No way. <laughs> I call them by name, and suddenly all the hands go down. Okay. Uh, who prayed yesterday? I forgot. Atara. Atara did. Okay. Well, since since Joanna volunteered, let's let's ask Joanna to pray. Couldn't understand much. It was difficult to understand. It was kind of quiet and unclear. But it's okay. It's a prayer. God heard it, right? I like the lesson today. It's good. We all make mistakes. David made a very big mistake, but God forgave him and he repented. God forgives. And we should forgive too, right? Forgive and forget. When your friends make mistakes and make you angry. Do your friends make you angry? Think, think of a friend who always makes you angry and annoys you. Always do. Yeah, we, we all have those kind of friends, right? Or teachers. Yeah. <laughs> not only one yeah. not or only teachers one maybe. make you angry Some, sometimes teachers they kind of uh, hurt our feelings yeah. a lot too yeah. not only our feelings yeah, but sometimes do. our backs too yes yeah you can you can forgive and forget because I'm we are all baby. forgiven and all our mistakes are forgotten anyway and I had 901 one. And I have one. we have to go to bed right it's late i'll see you tomorrow morning at school if you're coming to school Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, sir. Bye, sir. Good night. 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 Good night.